Hi guys, this is George from DynamicDrive.com and in this video I'm going to do a quick overview of the Blossom opt-in feature box script and more specifically how to add it to your WordPress blog. So Blossom is a feature box script you can use to display important information to your users or capture the user's information such as email addresses, display an advertisement, or just some kind of announcement. Just to get a sense of uh, Blossom, let me reload the page here. And uh, in this default demo, the script is activated when the user scrolls the page 10% or more from the top. So let's do that right now. And as you can see, a box pops down with this nice swing animation asking for the user's email address. There's uh, five effects built in of the box. There is just the slide down effect, Star Wars, the newspaper effect, wiggle, and last but not least, the swing effect. Scripts like these tend to get very annoying if you show them on every page and Blossom takes into account this by offering you robust frequency control. So you can display the script each time the page is loaded, once per user session, or once every say x minutes, x hours, or x days. So let's see now how to add Blossom to your WordPress blog. So the first thing we want to do is uh, grab a copy of the zip file that contains all the necessary files for Blossom. You can uh, navigate to this URL to go to Blossom's homepage. And I'll include a link below the video so you can just click on that. And then scroll down here under directions, you will see a link to the zip file. First thing you want to do is download the zip file, save. I'm going to save it under uh, a directory. Now that that's done, I am going to unzip the zip file. So as you can see, inside the zip file, there is a demo.htm plus an assets folder that contains all the files, the support files that come with the script. All right, so now what we're going to do is add Blossom to your WordPress blog. I have here a basic fresh install of WordPress using the default 2016 theme. Here is the WordPress dashboard and the first thing we want to do is upload all the support files of Blossom into your website directory. So the support files are basically everything under assets. There's uh, basically two ways we can upload files to our website. The first is uh, using FTP, and the second is using uh, WordPress's media functionality within the WordPress dashboard. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it via the latter way. Let's go into uh, WordPress's dashboard here. And as you can see, I've selected the media functionality here. This uh, feature here lets me upload any file to my WordPress blog. So what I'm going to do here first is click on the Add New link here. Click on Select Files. And what we want to do here is upload all the files inside Assets onto WordPress. So I'm going to select all the files that are inside this folder and click Open. So as you can see, all the files are being uploaded and now they're complete. Moving on, the next step is to add the Blossom markup to your WordPress templates so that when a uh, blog post uh, loads, Blossom shows up. To do that, first thing we want to do is move our mouse over to uh, Appearance and then Editor. What we want to do here is add some code to the head section of your WordPress blog. So we can do that by clicking on theme header or header.php. 
Now, depending on the theme you're using, this file name or this title may be something different. But basically, what you want to do is access the header of your WordPress blog. So I'm going to click on theme header. And then within this header code, we're going to add some Blossom code to it so that Blossom shows up or is at least initiated throughout every page of your blog. So to locate the markup for Blossom, we're going to open a text editor first. In this case, I'm using Edipad. I'm going to go back to the zip file that I had unzipped for Blossom. And then I'm going to open demo.htm. And when you open this file, what you'll see is some code inside the head section of this uh, demo page. Copy everything inside the head section, except the meta tag you see at the very top. Copy it. And then paste it into your WordPress header template somewhere inside the head tag. So I'm just going to put it right above the closing header tag here. And I'm going to click update file. Now we're not quite yet done. At this point, what we want to do is uh, change all these assets references inside the code we just pasted to point towards the same files that we had uploaded using the media feature within WordPress. To do this, the first thing I'm going to do is open a new tab. I'm going to duplicate and load the uh, WordPress dashboard. And I'm going to go back to media. Within media, what I want to do is to get the URL of each of these uh, files that I had uploaded so that I could reference them in the header template. So for example, I want to get the URL of this file. I'm going to click on it. And as you can see, here's the URL. I'm going to copy it. And I'm uh, going to go back to my other tab here. And what I'm going to do is replace this .js file reference with the URL that I had copied. I'm going to do the same thing for these two files. So bloom uh, blossom feature box.css. I'm going to copy the URL. I'm going to paste it here. The same thing with opt-in content.css. So opt-in content.css. I'm going to copy and I'm going to replace it. And last but not least, there's one more file I need to uh, change the reference to and that is opt-in content.txt. I'm going to head over to the other tab containing my media files and I'm going to click on uh, opt-in content.txt to get the URL for it. And I'm going to replace the old one with the new URL. Now, there's one little thing left that we have to do in order for the uh, file name that we just pasted to work. And that is to replace the domain portion of the URL with JavaScript instead. Now, the domain portion of this URL is everything that I've just highlighted here. The reason why we need to replace this with JavaScript is because we're using Ajax, which is a technology to fetch the text file here and include it onto our WordPress blog. In order for that to work reliably, the domain portion of an Ajax URL should be dynamic so that it always reflects exactly what the user has typed in in the address bar. So uh, in this case, the domain portion of the URL is what I've highlighted here. What I'm going to do is replace that with JavaScript. What we're going to do here is delete the domain name and type in http colon slash slash 
closing uh, apostrophe plus window dot location dot host name plus opening apostrophe and that's it now let's see how this is done again with a real domain so let's say the original URL that we had pasted is say http colon forward slash forward slash www.dynamicdrive.com slash and the rest here now to transform this into a javascript url what we want to do first is locate the domain name itself which is this part i'm going to delete this and just do exactly what i did earlier i'll type in http slash slash Closing apostrophe plus window dot location dot host name plus an opening apostrophe. And if your site is served behind a secure HTTPS, simply modify this portion and add an S. And there you go. So the main configuration for the script is now finished. So let's take a look at the script in action. In this tab, I have my blog open. And what I'm going to do is reload the page to see Blossom feature box pop up. Yep, it works. I'm going to close this. Now I'm going to head back to uh, my dashboard and show you some other changes you want to make. The first thing you want to do is obviously change what gets shown inside the feature box. The edit is opt-in-content.txt. Now I'm going to do the changes first locally and then upload the file again to reflect the changes. So I'm going to go into Notepad and I'm going to open up opt-in-content.txt inside the zip file. So under the assets folder, here is opt-in-content.txt. In general, you can edit anything inside the opening div tag. If you use uh, Aweber or GetResponse, for example, to collect email addresses, you'll want to uh, edit the form tag here. Basically remove this and replace it with whatever code Aweber or GetResponse tells you to uh, add to your form. Now in this video, I'm just going to make some small edits so you can see that the changes are reflected. So I'm going to add in here. Sign out for exclusive content from Dynamic Drive. I'm also going to update this image URL so it points to the image we uploaded to WordPress earlier. For that, I'm going to go back into the WordPress dashboard under Media. I'm going to click on the image that I uploaded. And I'm going to grab the URL for the image. Now going back to Edipad, I'm going to replace this image path with the image URL that I copied. Press save. So now we have a modified opt-in content.txt file. In order for this change to be reflected on our server, what we need to do is re-upload opt-in content.txt file to replace the old version. To do that, I'm going to go back to WordPress's dashboard and I'm going to delete this old opt-in content.txt file. Click on delete permanently. Once that's done, I am going to re-upload opt-in content.txt. So there we go. So the new or the modified opt-in content.txt file is uploaded. Let's see if it gets reflected on our site. I'm going to reload this page. And boom, see? The changes we made are now live. Close this and go back to the WordPress dashboard. See if I can find it. Now, there's many other settings that you can change inside Blossom Feature Box Script, and it's all in this area. For example, I could change the effect to, let's say, Star Wars. I can change the display type to say pop up after two seconds. And I can change the display frequency to let's say once per session. And press update file. 
Now let's take a look here. So if this all works, the box should pop up after two seconds. I'm gonna reload the page. There you go. After two seconds, it gets popped up. Now we set the display frequency to once per session. That means until the user closes the browser, the box will not be shown again. Now let's see if this is true. I'm going to reload the page. And yes, it does not get shown again. For a detailed description of all the settings, just go to Blossom Optin Box's documentation page, which uh, again, you can find a link to below this video. And on this page, you will find details and explanation of all the accepted values and some other configuration information. There you go. Enjoy Blossom Optin Content Box for your site or WordPress.